um, if u is a reasonable fraction of c, the quantity can be appreciably less than one, then L can be substantially smaller than L zero, and the effects of length contraction are significant. So here's an example. We've got these uh, electrons, particle accelerators, and they're traveling at slack near Stanford. So they're only going by slower than the speed of light uh, by 10 centimeters per second. As measured in the reference frame of such an electron, the beam line, which extends from the top of this photograph, is only eight centimeters long. So in the reference frame of the electron, it goes a tiny distance. So you can see here that space travel, if we actually ever do have space travel, it's gonna be pretty strange because like at, at relativistic speeds, I should say. We have space travel, but like not just to like the moon or like Mars if it takes like years. We're talking about like if we're going fast like these electrons, it's gonna be very strange because we're not just gonna have changing times, but we're also gonna have, we can't agree on how far something was that we traveled. <laughs> so the electron thinks it only traveled eight centimeters when you can see here, this picture doesn't even cover the whole distance that it travels. This is miles, at least a couple miles, it looks like, at least a mile. Okay, so this equation that we derived here is for lengths measured in the direction parallel to the relative motion of two frames of reference. There's also lengths that are measured perpendicular to the direction of motion, and they're not contracted. So what that means is, remember that the shape of an object has to do with its measurements in three directions, and it has a volume. So that means that when you have this, this contraction, objects don't maintain their same volume even. So when you look at somebody and they're traveling at a relativistic speed, they're gonna look, they're gonna look squished, right? Or something. They're gonna, they're, they're, they're gonna have a different shape to them. They're gonna appear, their volume isn't gonna be preserved. So we have a relativity of volume, but that's kind of weird because then we have a relativity of density because density is mass per unit volume. So how do we reconcile that? Okay, so that's something to, that's something to think about a little bit. Um, lengths that are measured perpendicular to the direction are not contracted. Consider two identical meter sticks. One stick is at rest in frame S and lies along the positive y-axis with one end at O, the origin of S. The other is at rest in frame S prime and lies along the positive y-axis with one end at O prime, the origin of S prime. Frame S prime moves in the positive x direction relative to frame S. Observers Stanley and Mavis at rest in S and S prime respectively station themselves at the 50 centimeter mark of their sticks. At the instant the two origins coincide, the two sticks lie along the same line. So at this instant, Mavis makes a mark on Stanley's stick at the point that coincides with her own 50 centimeter mark and Stanley does the same to Mavis's. So for the sake of argument, assume that Stanley observes Mavis's stick as longer than his own then the mark Stanley makes on her stick is below its center. Okay, let's see if we can get a picture here to actually illustrate this. Okay, so here we go. So we're looking at lengths. Now we're looking at lengths going in this direction. The meter sticks are perpendicular to the relative velocity. For any value of u, both Stanley and Mavis measure either stick to have a length of one meter because the moving rod of length L0, it makes this angle theta naught with the direction of relative motion, this direction here. Um, L0 cosine theta zero is contracted. However, its length component perpendicular to the motion is not that, it's L sine theta zero, which remains the same. So it has to do with the fact that we have this relative speed u here. This is why the length contraction doesn't um, affect the perpendicular motion. We can show it with this complicated 
geometrical thought experiment. But the simplest way to see it is, well, the, this U applies to just the X direction because that's the only direction that the motion is occurring in. So since there's no change in Y and Z, Y and Z have the, the relative motion in those frames is the same for Stanley and Mavis, right? There's no, there's no change in Y or Z. She's not flying up and going different ways. If she was, then yes, length contraction would be occurring in those directions as well. But since there's not, it's just along X, there's no length contraction in those other directions. And you can see it simply from, from this formula. It's quite, quite easy to see that. Because we've got like, U is only in the X direction, not in the Y or Z. So that's the way that I would remember that. It's, it's actually pretty simple, pretty straightforward for that one. Okay, so um, we'll do this example uh, next class on Tuesday. I think what we'll do is we'll finish up with relativity on Tuesday, and then next Thursday, we're gonna have like a big review session where we pull everything together, and then I'll do like a final thing, and I think we have a quiz next Thursday, right? I believe so. Double check the, double check the syllabus.